Nah, that was a good one. Right? What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Rantcast. Uh, really quick before we get started, if you haven't seen the Rantcast in real life, two-part series go back and watch that before you watch the rest of this video but if you have just go ahead and continue watching today we're going to be talking about apple and wwdc 2020 and to help me discuss that we've got the usual brandon mendel but we've also got a special guest matt dulovich check that out look at that nice new layout right here now before we get started uh matt let's let's see your wrist let's see your wrist dude look oh what's that what's that let's uh let, let's see your phone dude um, okay. Oh, Ooh. man. So, if you guys remember the last episode that Matt was in, he had a Galaxy Note 9, and I believe his exact words were, I'm going to be sticking with Samsung permanently because I don't like the direction Apple is going. That's a weird looking and, Samsung. And, and this is his second iPhone since then now. Yeah, I had uh, traded my Note 9 for a 10R, and then now I have an 11 Pro Max. Yeah, so, just just like yeah. your boy, just like your boy, except mine's and, silver. Uh, but this year, I don't like the direction Samsung's taken. So. Okay, well, regardless, uh, I guess we're gonna go ahead and get started here with uh, the new WatchOS guys. They're on uh, what is it? It's WatchOS 7 now. Check that out. They they finally. They advertise it right on the front here. Bring on the night? That's because they added sleep tracking to the Apple Watch. Finally, which is something that everyone's been asking for for quite some time now. I personally don't really care too much, but it is cool that it is finally there. And uh, Matt actually has a hands-on of the beta, so we can have him explain uh, how, it's gonna, how it's been so far, I guess. Uh, you want to go ahead and do that, Deed? Yeah, so uh, honestly, it doesn't seem much different. Uh, they haven't really added too much yet. So yeah, the, the night track and yeah, it's there, but I don't wear mine at night. So there's a few other things we'll talk about, which are pretty cool. Um, but I have a series three yeah. and not everything's supported. Now I will be trying this out, like the sleep tracking. I don't have the betas because I'm not running iOS 14 beta on my phone, so it wouldn't work. And uh, I'd just be left with a brick on my wrist. Uh, regardless though, I do have an Apple watch that I sleep with at night just to monitor heart rate, not because of a heart issue or anything it's just i find it kind of interesting for whatever reason don't really know why but that's just what i do so i'll be uh testing out that sleep tracking when it officially comes out in september so let's go ahead and scroll down here the first thing they talk about below that splash screen is watch faces so you can share watch faces now which actually sorry that's a little bit farther down we'll get to that in just a second so uh they added some new faces. They've got this uh, this big one with audio monitoring, just front and center right there. Not really sure why anyone would want that. That's not really my thing. This one's pretty cool. This, uh, I believe you pronounced that tachymeter. It's a pretty cool layout right there. Similar to what I'm using, except just a little bit different, but it is a pretty cool watch face. It looks like those uh, old classic mechanical watches. Uh, over here we have a Roman numeral uh just big analog watch face and i guess that's it for the previews there oh and a picture yeah you can put pictures on your watch faces but you've been able to do that for quite a long time we're starting off with the apple watch because it's the most boring topic of this video um there's not really much different uh but here's face sharing this is what i was talking about earlier you can text email or put a link online to download a custom watch face that someone else has made Kind of cool, but also kind of useless at the same time when you really think about it. Um, you can also find faces in the App Store and online, so a website or a, uh, a company, I guess, can just put a watch face on their website for you to download, which is pretty cool. Probably not something that I will be doing, though. Here's the sleep app. Look at that. The page goes to a, a nice little dark mode right there. Uh, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got this little thing that it does. It switches to this very basic watch face right here just puts the time in big digital format here with an alarm under it puts it in do not disturb and it also does this to your phone it says sleep well and puts on do not disturb kind of cool but i don't know i don't really need my watch telling me how to sleep <laughs> and on the topic of watches telling us to do things check this out other than the fitness stuff which i'm not going to go over because i don't really care about it that much 
Uh, cycling and maps has been added, but this is the other thing that I was talking about. I don't, I don't need my watch telling me how to wash my hands, okay? So, when you read this right here, using motion sensors and microphone, Apple Watch automatically detects hand washing and starts a 20 second timer for the people who don't know how to wash their hands. For count to 20. Yeah. It's the most, it's the most 2020 thing ever. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, the whole thing is, you know, the CDC rec uh, recommends washing hands for 20 seconds because of uh, COVID going on right now, which I am actually allowed to say. I just can't go into detail on it. So COVID, I can say it now without getting my ad revenue taken away. Awesome. Anyway, 20 second recommendations. There you go. Uh, if your watch detects that you've stopped washing your hands early, it will encourage you to continue for the full 20 seconds. And I have seen that apparently that it's as simple as just clicking a little X in the corner to get rid of it. So it's not like a prominent thing. But Okay, that's good. I hope at least I hope that you can actually just disable that entirely because that's going to drive me crazy. Um, and you can also have a home reminder, but the fact that it says that it can remind you to wash your hands leads me to believe that it's not a thing that just can't be disabled, which is good. Siri updates. Eh, no one really cares about Siri anymore, but it does have uh, 10 languages built into the watch now that it can translate to. I'm assuming offline, but maybe not. I don't know for sure. And it adds uh, Siri shortcuts to the Apple Watch. Not entirely sure why those weren't on the Apple Watch to begin with, but there they are. They're here now. Pretty cool. There you go. Here's another thing I don't really like too much. Check this out. Hearing health. To protect your hearing, Watch OS 6 introduced the noise app, which every time I drive, my watch tells me that I'm in a loud noise environment because of my subwoofers. Um, anyway, to protect your hearing, we're now giving you more ways to keep your hearing safe as well as control the volume you listen to. Um, so I guess uh, I can notify you when you have your headphone volume up too loud and uh, it can also reduce them. That's very Samsung That's, of them. Yeah, that, I remember that. That was the most annoying thing on my Galaxy. I had to confirm that I wanted to turn it up past three quarters of the way before it would let me. But there's that... Uh, Get notified and have your headphone volume reduced to a safe level when you reach the World Health Organization's recommended safe weekly listening dose. Great. Okay. Uh, I guess it puts in your weekly listening summary, I'm guessing in the health, health app now on your iPhone. And uh, you can set a max headphone volume, which has been a thing, I believe, since the iPod Classic days. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's compatible all the way back down to the Apple Watch Series 3. I have a first-gen Apple Watch. That's Series 0, uh, Series 4, and Series 5. So all of them except my first-gen will be able to run it. And it also requires iPhone and uh, sorry, an iPhone 6s or newer with iOS 14 or newer running on it. And that's why I don't have the beta because I'm not running iOS 14. I should say for anybody looking to try the beta, um, if you are going to download it on an iphone and a watch at least with the iphone you can restore don't do it on the watch There's can you not no restore the watch it. you it, it no you have oh, to take no. it to an apple store or wait for a newer version to come out that's unfortunate right there that's not very yep. cool nope. that's not very cool there um Anyway, guys, uh, the next thing that we have to talk about is iOS 14, or I guess as I should be calling it, Android, because it pretty much is Android now. And uh, to demonstrate that, this is something we've never done in a Rantcast episode before. I have a hands-on beta right here on this iPhone XS Max. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and switch over to that right now. Check that out. Here's the lock screen. Look at that. Learn how to change Siri's voice is the tip of the day from iOS 14 beta. Very useful. Let's go ahead and unlock it. As you can see, the home screen is largely the same as it has been for uh, since iOS 7. Uh, you'll notice that the activity app has been renamed Fitness. Pretty cool right there. Not really much has changed with that other than the name, though. Um, but you'll notice... If you swipe one more, you are presented with an app drawer. Uh, Apple calls it an app library, probably just to throw off the people who know that it's... The, uh, sorry, who don't know that it's called an app drawer, but the one downfall of this is that you can't customize the layout of this. You have to... It's like, it's just set. This is, this is how it is. It's, it comes like this, 
and it stays like this. You can't reorganize anything, and it's really annoying. But I guess to be fair, everything is organized relatively decently, and this is only the first ever developer beta. Honestly, by the time this episode comes out, there could be another one, but there's the app drawer. So if you <laughs> tap up in a search, it will do an alphabetical list. Um, that's right. But that's like an extra step you have to take just to see everything. I mean, it's kind of cool. I, I wish I could just organize it myself, though, you know? Um, another thing that you can do now is uh, to enter the uh, edit home screen mode is you can now just tap and hold anywhere on the screen and your apps will start jiggling or as I believe they called it in the actual WWDC keynote jiggle mode yeah, yeah. but if you tap the uh, little dots at the bottom it'll bring up this and uh, you can actually hide pages that you don't want to show now and the apps on pages that are hidden will show in the app library or app drawer as I'm going to be calling it for the rest of this uh, video pretty cool pretty nice feature to have right there and another new thing if you look in the top left corner there's a plus button and what that does is give you widgets that you can place on your home screen just like Android has had for a million years now, we can finally do that on iOS. Look at that. Wow, look at that animation it does. That's pretty sick right there. Oh, man, we can do fitness right here, and there's, like, different sizes and stuff. Oh, this one only has two. But there's the uh, that's the idea there. Um, the downfall to this is that you can't put them anywhere you want. They have to be either on the left or right side. You can't say you want to have it between, like, uh, two apps, right? Can't do that. It's got to be on a side. Which sucks, but at least they finally gave us widgets on the home screen. Yeah, you know, Apple eh. thinks you know what's best for you. That's, again, very Maybe true here. It took a while to get that implemented in, but <laughs> hey, at least we got it now. Yeah, they got to make right. it their way somehow. Uh, continuing here, if you swipe left, you can see uh, the new widget design is here as well. Um, they seem to be working pretty well, except the screen time one doesn't seem to be having too good of a time right now, but, and you know, pull down also activates spotlight search, which I swear it's easier to accidentally activate that than it used to be. Um, another new thing is the camera app. The camera application has actually changed a little bit. It's now the iPhone 11 Pro design. Look at that. Um, you can now finally tap the frame rate and uh, resolution up in the top right to change them. You could do that on the iPhone 11 Pro since day one. Not really sure why the other phones didn't get it, but they have it now. And if you look right above where it says 4K, that little green dot means that your camera is being used. And uh, when you switch, it, tur it turns orange for a second. Orange means microphone. So if you see either of those in Facebook, you will know with even less of a doubt that they're spying on you. And speaking of Facebook, I'm going to demonstrate why you don't want to run a beta operating system on your main iPhone. Look at that. You want to check Facebook? Sorry, buddy. You can't, can't have that. Facebook's the only app I've had that issue with so far, but regardless, my point still stands. That's why I have it on this secondary phone right here and not my main phone, which is this iPhone 11 Pro Max. Yeah, I, I second that. Don't install it on your main phone. Um, I do have it on my main phone and uh, HTML, anything HTML doesn't want to work right now. Uh, Safari crashes, Firefox and mail. You'll notice I'm now in a FaceTime call with Brandon here. Uh, this is to show another feature that Android has had for quite some time. So say you're in a FaceTime call, you want to search YouTube or Google for something. Usually when you would do that, the other person's phone screen would just say paused with a little camera with the dash going through it. Now, wow, look at that, guys. We, we've got picture in picture on the iPhone. I, I can't believe it. Look at that. You can you can change the size of it, but you can't put it anywhere you want. It's got to be in one of the corners. But, you know, at least they at least they actually gave us picture in picture. I, I think that's as big as it can go. It can also shrink down to be that little tiny thing right there. And if that's not small enough, boy, you can switch it off to the side right there. And your camera still goes. See, you can still see that little green dot up in the top there. And then when you're ready, you just bring that thing back and continue your call. Now that green dot's still there because even though you can't see your picture, 
in that little window. Your camera's still active, so Brandon, if you show your phone to the, uh, show your phone to the camera really quick, let's see. Can you still see my face? Check that out, guys, and it's, uh, pixely goodness. You can see, um, that even though my camera is not showing up in that little preview window, it's still active and working. There's a lot of latency because of everything that's going on right now, but that is, uh, that's picture in picture. Another feature that Android has had forever, and now we finally have on iOS. Another thing related to calls and related to something that Android's had forever is uh, I unfortunately can't demonstrate it here because um, when you're screen recording an iPhone like this into QuickTime, uh, it automatically just puts you at full service level, doesn't have a carrier, and full Wi-Fi, and do not disturb. This button does not do anything when you're recording this way. And it's also funny that it says that I have full service in here because I don't have a SIM card in this phone. Regardless, the feature that I can't show you is that when you get a call, it no longer takes over your entire screen. All it does is put a little banner at the top, you can either decline or accept, or if you want to just let it ring to voicemail, you can just slide it away, just like you would with a notification. Another thing we've been asking for for years, and Apple finally listened. There's one last thing that I want to talk about before we dive deeper on the website about features that I can't demonstrate in the hands-on right here, is a new feature where you can tap the back of your iPhone and map that to different things. So right now I have a double tap set to return to home pretty sweet and I also have a triple tap which I can't do which I'll just show you what happens check that out leaving home and then it just doesn't work because um, the screen recording cancels it out you'll see here in a second actually it did work that time okay well cool so that worked that time uh, regardless basically my leaving home shortcut turns off Wi-Fi and all of the lights and stuff in my room pretty cool. That's something I actually can't wait to have on my main phone. The double tap to return home, I kind of just put there as a demo just just to show that it works, you know? Why, it's I, an why accessibility you, shortcut. Right. Like, yeah. why you would not just swipe up from the bottom of the screen, I have no idea. But in that event, you can do that. I guess you could do a double tap map to um, the app switcher to kind of bring back that double tap the home button feel from back in the day. But regardless, let's go ahead and switch to the website and dive a little bit deeper into the iOS 14 features. Here we are on the iOS 14 preview webpage right here. And this right off the bat is one of the features that I could not show you in the hands-on demo. This is called App Clips. Now I'm gonna try as good as I can to explain it. Matt might be able to explain it better. Um, do you wanna explain it actually? Yeah, so essentially, right, um, essentially what App Clips is, is instead of having to download the full app, you could scan a QR code or tap a uh, tap an NFC tag, say at like parking meter or at a store that has their own app for payment. And essentially it'll download, it has to be less than 10 megabytes um, for the clip. They have to be less than 10 megabytes and essentially it downloads a temporary version of whatever the full app is to your phone so that you can say complete a payment, pay for parking, order a latte from Starbucks or whatever it might be. And then when you're done, you have the option to download the full app or delete the clip. It's a pretty cool concept. Um, I understand why they need to be less than 10 megabytes because cell data is ridiculously expensive. And in a, well, I guess not in big cities, but if you're like out in the back country, like Calhan down here, you're getting real slow cell service. So I understand why they put a 10 megabyte cap on there because 10 megabytes is pretty much nothing uh, with the type of cell plans people are buying these days. But regardless, pretty cool feature, definitely going to be a uh, big help for, especially those like ride things that you have to like pay for parking oh, yeah, with like your the, phone. The yeah. bird scooters or... Yeah, yeah. or the Plus pay for Apple parking. Pay. Yeah, they have Apple Pay built in too. That's so right, that's use... pretty sweet. Yeah. So... <sighs> Look, looks brand new. No, it doesn't. It looks like Android. I'm sorry, but it looks like Android. Let's keep going down here. Uh, experience widgets on the home screen. I already showed you guys that. 
Uh, compact calls, here it is right here. Check that out. Check how nice that is. Look at how much better that is than just taking over your entire screen when a call comes in. Why was that not a thing, like, five years ago? Picture in picture, showed you guys that too. Pretty nice thing to have, which unfortunately YouTube right now does not support that. I'm guessing that will change pretty soon, though. Uh, messages, this is another thing that I didn't show you in the, um, hands-on, because for whatever reason, when I, whenever I get a new phone, I, iMessage stops working on the phone before it. Uh, I, I don't understand why, but that's just what happens, but uh, check this out, you can actually pin conversations to the top of your uh, messages app, and when someone says something, it pops up in this nice little bubble right here, and uh, it's pretty sweet, I actually really like that feature pretty cool thing and uh, another thing that they have added is group photos which uh, we actually have a group going on in iMessage for this group right here it's called the Rantcast squad you know kind of a it's a cliche name but whatever and then uh, your boy Matt over here today just added a group photo now Brandon can't see it and I can't see it on my main devices but I can see it on my MacBook and I think it's pretty sweet can't I am excited for that to come to the real world on my iMac and my MacBook and my iPhone and everything is just going to be sweet. Now, yeah. another thing that they've added in messages is inline replies. This is very similar to a messaging app called Telegram where you can just reply, select a message, reply to it, and it puts it like right next to it. Um, now, I tried that. I did it on uh, my MacBook and then I looked at it on my iPhone uh, 11 Pro and it just looked like a normal text message, but on the MacBook and the iPhone 10s after I let it sync with iCloud It actually did the reply thing. So pretty nice to have that. I think uh, Mentions as well. I thought for sure that was already a thing, but Mentions cool. It was a thing but only on the Macs. I think oh, okay. it might have only been in group chats I don't know who knows I, I have no idea. Oh, that is a group. I don't know. Who cares? It's whatever. Um, yeah. New Memoji styles and stickers. Look at this. You can put a you can put a mask on you now. 2020, everyone. Welcome to Apple. I okay. Yeah. There's a lot of COVID-based things in these new updates. They have changed a few things around in maps. They've added cycling directions, which actually like include staircases, from what I understood from watching the keynote which is pretty cool, like it tells you where you'll have to get off your bike and carry it upstairs, or you can just uh, set a route that avoids stairs. Kind of like you, you can, can do out. avoid highways when you're driving, you can avoid stairs when you're riding your bike. It also kind of, uh, from what I understand, it'll like warn you when you should walk your bike across the street, like it'll know a busy intersection from a normal you know, neighborhood road or something. Right. Which is pretty cool and probably will save a bunch of people's lives just like the uh, EKG did on the Apple Watch Series 4 when that was first announced. Or, sorry, when that was first released. Um, it's also got EV routing now. So, say you're driving a Tesla or a, uh, a little peasant Chevy Volt. I don't know why anyone would ever buy one of those, but say you are, it'll show you uh, EV charging stations. Pretty handy thing to have with how many electric vehicles exist now. You know they make an electric smart car now? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh gosh. You know what? A, a little thing about that. When the smart car first came out, I thought it was an electric car. Because it looked, it, it, always, it always looked same like here. it should be a, an electric car. Yeah. I thought hey. the same exact thing. And then when I found out, oh, it's a, it just has a small engine in there. Yeah, it's you disappointed, can, man. You can, think, uh, you can thank Mercedes-Benz for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Like, seriously, they, they, they make the smart car. No, I know. Like, it's yeah. ridiculous. Although, to be fair, I've seen video of it performing, and it's not that bad. Believe it or not. Yeah, I heard handling is terrible, but we're way oh, off topic. Cool. Um, yeah, sorry. So, next up in Maps, guys, we have Guides. Uh, Google Maps, anyone? You know, been a thing yeah. for a while. Uh, Translate, Google Translate, where you at? It is cool, though, that you can have an on-device mode, but as of now, there's only 11 languages. Like, come on, man. One thing I did forget to mention while I was demonstrating iOS 14 here was Siri. So if I do this, I'm not going to say the keyword because 10 other devices will go off, but what's the current time? Look at that. Isn't that cool? The one downside, though, is, say, this is up here and you're scrolling through an article. As soon as you touch anywhere, 
it just goes away. But at least they've improved series UI to not take over the entirety of your screen. Pretty nice right there, I think. Seems to be a theme for this uh, version is not interrupting you, and it shouldn't be. Which is nice, because there were a lot of uh, interruptions and bugs with, I, I believe it was iOS 12, if I remember right, yeah. was the really buggy release. But 13 yeah. was pretty buggy too, though. I yeah I didn't have many problems with it. That compact design with a little circle at the bottom, it does look pretty nice. I I enjoyed the animation. It's pretty cool. Um, here's this. You know, Siri has over twenty times more facts than she did just three years ago, so she now has a total of twenty facts. HomeKit got a little overhaul. It looks relatively the same. Like it looks familiar, but it's got some new features, like say uh, you leave your house and you left your lights on, you can turn those off, close the garage door and lock the front door, uh, same for when you're arriving home, you can, you know, have it notify you that you forgot to lock your front door, or uh, forgot to close the garage door, but those are things that I will never have because these are incredibly easy to be broken into, and then anyone can just tap something on their phone and get into my house, so I'll just stick with the old turnkey. I can vouch for that. I used to work at a security company. It's not yeah. really uh, secure. Now, this adaptive lighting thing is actually pretty cool. It's like, imagine the True Tone display, but in your house... I think it's pretty sweet. It'll change uh, your your lights throughout the day. Your color temperature would change, say, like in the afternoon. It would be cooler. And then at nighttime when you're going to bed, it would be warmer because blue light keeps you awake. Now, with cameras, this is one of the coolest features in the HomeKit overhaul. You can actually select an area for motion detection. So say, like, people driving down your street all the time, you get a notification for every single car that drives by. That gets old really quick, so you can now set just your property to be notified about really nice addition and another thing that i think should have been there a long time ago it's been there in other services and apps since the yeah one of the other services and apps another pretty sweet addition to home the home kit overhaul is this face recognition so i believe i'm not entirely sure but i think the ring doorbells work with home kit um so say someone goes rings your doorbell um, you can actually set people's faces. So say like, say I want Matt to uh, show up at my house, you know, he rings my little ring doorbell. Um, when he rings the doorbell, the camera feed will show up on my Apple TV and my HomePod will say, Matt is at your front door. And they demoed this in the, uh, the keynote. And when that happened, they unlocked the door with their phone and the guy just walked in and it was pretty cool. However, I will not have those phone control door locks because I don't trust them. Safari, great. I use Chrome. We're going to go ahead and skip this. Another big addition is this car keys and CarPlay. CarPlay got an overhaul. Oh, I wouldn't say overhaul. It just looks a little bit different now. But car keys, basically, I think the only car that you can use it with is a BMW. Highly unfortunate. Yeah. Very unfortunate that you can only use it with a BMW right now. Um, but you can unlock your car and start your car with your phone until your phone dies and you realize you left your keys at home and then Actually, you're screwed. I what? saw somewhere, I don't know how true it is, but I saw a video of somebody doing it with a dead iPhone. I think really? it's stored like in the NFC, it creates like an NFC tag whenever it okay. gets well, low. If, I mean, that's, that's, the, that'd be if cool. that's the case, that's awesome. But if not and you left your keys at home because you were sure your phone would be able to just last throughout the day, you're uh, you're waiting on the side of the street until someone lets you use their phone to call yourself an Uber. Sounds like a fun way to end the day right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, Power Reserve, I'm, I have no idea what Power Reserve is. I might have missed it in the keynote, but I don't remember them talking about it. It, it I might be... Anything. it. What I'm guessing is it's similar to the Apple Watch. Like, when, you're, when your Apple Watch dies, you can hold the little side button. Uh, not the crown, but the other button. You can hold that, and it'll show you the time. I'm guessing that's what the iPhone does. Maybe it has, uh, maybe it has a uh, relation to the car keys feature. But who knows? I won't know. I haven't found it on my phone yet. Um, but another thing related to the car key app is you can... You can text someone your car key. Kind of like lending out a valet key or something. Yeah, you can you know? text someone your key. 
which is kind of cool. It's pretty cool, I will admit. But it also seems like a uh, a nice way for someone to steal your car. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, if someone if someone obtains access to your Apple account and you have messages in iCloud on... Now, I know the car keys expire, right? But hear me out. If this is like credit cards and it syncs through iCloud and someone signs into your iCloud account on their phone, all they have to do is walk up to your car, get in, and drive away. It's as easy as that. No hot wiring, no breaking windows, no uh, clothes hanger trick. It's just hold your phone up to it and you're golden. I'm sure they would have thought of that somehow, but you never know. Yeah, we won't know until it comes out. Uh, here's the uh, home... Or Sorry, this is CarPlay, not HomeKit. Um, here's the CarPlay thing. Pretty cool here. You can actually put backgrounds on it now. Yeah, cool. they're uh, limited to what Apple selects. You can't. Oh, really? Uh, well, cool. Great. You can put <laughs> Apple's wallpapers on your car's dashboard now. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Um, yeah. Here's another thing that I'm pretty excited about. So, AirPods. I've got AirPods. I've also got AirPods Pro. This is a AirPods Pro feature. Spatial audio. Now, before we get into it, can we talk about how stupid the spelling for spatial is? Why is there a T? How, where, where'd the T come from? You know you know how you spell facial? You would think you would spell spatial the same way, right? But no, it's it's spatial. Spatial audio, guys. Spatial. Here we go. Freaking stupid. The English language is actually stupid. Regardless, bring surround wherever you go. I haven't tried it yet. Music doesn't sound any different, but it also just might not be working with the first beta of iOS 14. Um, but the way they explained it in the keynote was pretty sweet. So they use the accelerometers in the AirPods Pro, which I didn't even know were in there, right? So when you move, say you turn your head like that, right? I do that. The audio pans with it. Like, like it's like a center channel. Imagine a surround sound system. This is the best way I can explain it. Your center channel is where the dialogue comes out. So it would basically be like that. Your dialogue is coming just right out the phone into your ears, which I guess this is a terrible way to explain it, but this is what I can do here. So if you turn your head, it will detect that with the AirPods and keep the, uh, like say someone's speaking, it'll keep that in relation to where your iPhone is, like, in life. And I think that's pretty sweet, right? I think that's a pretty sweet feature. Um, it also works vice versa. If you move your phone, it uses the uh, accelerometer in your phone to detect where you're moving it and will keep the audio just latched to the phone, I guess is the best way I can explain it. I think that's pretty sweet. Another thing that's pretty awesome here is this uh, automatic switching. So say um, you're watching something on your phone, you realize you have an iPad, you pick up your iPad and start playing it, your AirPods, without you doing anything, automatically switch to your iPad. Same if you go to a Mac, and if someone calls you, they go right back to your iPhone and allow you to answer the call. And this is why yeah, I use Apple. This sweet. is this is that walled garden stuff that just makes using Apple worth it. Everything just works, okay? It's awesome. This It's just these little things. Headphone accommodations, just, just you know pretty cool it uh i guess it allows you to tune them i'm not entirely sure it also uh does auto aud- sorry audio sharing for apple tv and we'll get more into the tv later there's a little bit to talk about right there app clips already talked about that pretty sweet privacy not really going to talk about that too much i already discussed that little dot and um yeah well with the privacy there's also a newer thing they're doing where Anytime I open an app that I just installed or something, it's popping up and asking me, do you want this app to have these permissions? Like, do right. you where you are? Um, and then I think, if I'm not mistaken, the App Store also has kind of like a nutrition facts label, like for food, but for what the app does in the yeah, store. Yeah, that basically it tells you this app will do this with this data and it will be collecting this data at these times so in the case of facebook they're gonna say (laughs) camera and microphone on 24 7 and you will get targeted ads based on what you talk about in life so there's that (laughs) yeah Yeah. um that's pretty much it for ios 14 guys uh brandon you haven't really had you haven't really said too much uh what's your opinion on this uh new thing here 
pretty excited for it. I actually wanted to install the beta, but I was just like, I don't think I really, I've, I've had experience installing betas on my main phone and I just, I'm like, I'll just skip out on that one. Plus this one's jailbroken, so I don't want to lose that. But you jailbroke um, your 10s. Yeah, I just don't know that. I jailbroke Lots my 11 a few, like about a month ago, but I wanted this more. Right. <laughs> I've never jailbroken an iOS device in my life. I've always just you. used stock. Anyway, sorry, Brandon, we cut you off there. Uh, um, let's see here. What was I get saying? Uh, but yeah, I think I th- I have high hopes for fourteen. I'm pretty sure like I'll definitely be upgrading to that because I'm because I since I jailbreak my devices all the time, I'm pretty like slow on updates. So I'm very 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 cautious since once you update, you have a very limited window to downgrade. So uh, this one, I'm I'm feel pretty confident it has a lot of features that i always wanted in ios that android has had for a while and to see that implemented into ios 14 is pretty spectacular i think so it's nice to see that it's pretty cool ios 14 is basically a combination of android and jailbreak tweaks from what i've seen and used so far and i will say that it is a lot more stable than the mac os big sur beta which we're going to jump into right now so here it is guys, check out that login screen, that looks uh, eerily similar to Windows 10. And apparently I can't use my Apple Watch to unlock it when the screen is being shared. And that's how I'm doing that, this is actually running on my MacBook Air, and I'm just grabbing it on the iMac. So here it is guys, check this out, this is the uh, new default wallpaper, and it is dynamic, so this little area right here will be lighter during the day. Pretty sweet, we've got these uh, new icons which... Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know, mm. man. I don't know no. about these. I don't know about these. Like, it's like they're, it's... they're trying to make it look like the iPhone, but why did you have to add that little 3D element? It's, it's like they're trying to combine, you guys remember that skeuomorphic design they had back in the day? Yeah. It's like they're trying to combine that with the new flat design that they're, that they've been using since Yosemite and iOS 7. All I will say, though, is that the new Adobe icons make sense now. Look at that. Look at how they match. Like, here. That's a perfect match. Look at that. Look at the, look at all these squares, and then you've got Adobe Audition right here. Yep. <laughs> when Adobe released their new icons, I threw up in my mouth a little bit. I was like, why is there seven apps sharing the same color? And then I got Big Sur, and I was like, oh, look at that. Look at that match. Guarante- guarantee, guys. A- Adobe had uh, inside information here. Look at how out of Probably place did. the Google icons look now, too. That's insane. Now, while we're here in the launch pad... Okay, they fixed the bug. I swear, right before we recorded this, I could not click anywhere. Here it is. Look at that. I can't click anywhere to dismiss launch pad. You have to go over here, and then it goes away. Apparently, it's a variable issue, though. Now, the uh, the menu bar up at the top, check that out, we've got a, a new little thing right here, a little thing called Control Center, you guys might remember that from iOS, pretty significant feature right there, I actually do really like that, um, and you can also click and drag things into your menu bar, I already had Do Not Disturb there, but say I want keyboard brightness, you can't do keyboard brightness, oh yeah you can, there you go, you just click and drag it, from the control center into the menu bar and I think that's pretty cool however I am going to remove that if I can I actually don't think I can how do you remove it you're learning with learning with me right now um okay I guess that's I guess that's just gonna be on my menu bar now all right Regardless, uh, let's dive into system preferences here. So check this out. We've got um, relatively the same look. This bell, though, this bell looks really weird. Um, We'll go into the battery settings in just a second here and show you everyone's favorite new icon. But, you know, everything looks pretty much the same. Your Apple ID and stuff is at the top here. And then you go into the battery settings and what is that? What is this icon? You know what I'm talking about, right, Matt? Uh, Oh, man. I don't understand, man. And yes, the battery in this MacBook is completely destroyed. It's been through like 2,000 charge cycles, so a charge only lasts like 45 minutes now. That's why there's so many sharp 
peaks and valleys in this graph here, but whatever. It even gives you a little uh, important battery message. The battery's capacity is significantly reduced. To restore capacity, please buy a new MacBook because this one's soldered to the board. <laughs> yep. Apple. There are no service options for this gun, guys. Come on. Uh, on the topic of the battery, why can't I have the, the the percent show in my menu bar? Like, it's cool. Like, here, check this out. If I unplug power, it should show in just a second here. Come on, are you serious? Well, take my word for it, I guess. It does show the percentage remaining. I can't put the percentage in the menu bar anymore, so I actually have to click this battery icon to get it to show really friggin' annoying, and um, it. I am happy they brought back the um, time remaining because that went away in, I believe, Sierra, and now it's back with macOS Big Sur. I just hope they do something about this battery icon. Now, they won't. I will admit that when I first got this operating system, I, 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 I actually genuinely hated it. I hated the rounded corners on the windows. I hated just, I hated the new sounds, which actually we'll get into those in just a second. I, I hated everything, but after using it for a few days, it's actually really grown on me. I still don't know how I feel about these new icons, but the rounded corners and the new sounds, they're growing on me. I actually enjoy them. Now, on the topic of sounds, th I'm, I'm just going to show you a few of the uh, significant ones. So, say, if I try to quit Finder... Hear that? That's completely different than the uh, error tone on the uh, Max used to be. That's one that I'm still not entirely too big of a fan of, but check this out. We'll, make, we'll just do this this way. Listen to the new copy sound. That's pretty cool, right? Now listen to the uh, trash sound. Pretty cool. Empty trash is also different. And also, look at this. New little notification windows are completely different as well. There's some of the new sounds. Uh, there's also a new screenshot sound. There you go right there. Look at that beautiful screenshot I just took right there. Very high resolution. But, uh, yeah. MacOS Big Sur, guys, uh, Launchpad looks different, Activity Monitor looks different, even Finder looks different. But, all things considered, I actually do really enjoy the look of this now. Again, other than these stupid icons here, it's also really nice that you can have uh, Do Not Disturb turned on permanently. On current versions of macOS, it turns off at midnight. I always thought that was so stupid. If I turn it on, leave it on until I turn the switch back to off. But now it's always on, or you can also schedule it until this evening for an hour or until tomorrow. Pretty cool. And we also have this uh, keyboard brightness thing stuck in my menu bar now. That's pretty sweet right there, guys. Yeah, I'll figure that out later. Desktop icons are different as well. There's the uh, hard drive icon right there. Try to make that a little bit bigger for you. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That looks way different than it used to. Your removable disks look different. They all have that same shape. Uh, USB drives, like flash drives, are still that silvery gray color. Removable external, like full-on hard drives are orange with this shape. And then this is what Time Machine backup disks look like. And I do not have one set up because I don't care. I, I, I just don't care. <laughs> Half the time it's just easier to reinstall and do it yourself. Especially with this, which we'll actually get into uh, right now. Let's look at this really quick. Finder version 11.0. That's foreshadowing here. Another big change about this is that this is macOS version 11. Mac OS 10 no more. This is Mac OS 11.0 Big Sur. Big change there. Check this out. Look at that storage. Wow, 42 gigabytes available and all I've done is install Google Chrome and Adobe Audition. That's another reason I don't have a backup made of this yet because I am going to... I actually, by the time this video comes out, I will have been using a one terabyte Western Digital NVMe drive inside this MacBook for three-ish weeks because this 128 gigabyte crap is not... It's nowhere near enough even for a phone these days. Uh, messages is taking up the uh, majority of this. Even though it's iCloud messages, it still apparently downloads every single file and every single message locally, 
wasting my storage. And then you have this big 34 gigabyte other category. Sick nasty right there. Apps using significant energy system information. Yeah, it's taking a lot of lot of power to show me how much storage I have available. Uh, but regardless, yes, it is possible to replace the SSDs in these MacBooks. I, I didn't do a video on it. My bad. But there's other videos that are better than the one that I would have produced regardless. So you said Mac OS is version 11 now, which that signifies a pretty big leap. Um, it does. Yeah. So, that, so if I'm hearing correctly, they're making their own chips now, am I right? You're right, guys. So the uh, macOS version 11.0 isn't just because of this whole new look and feel and everything. Apple is switching away from Intel, and they will be creating their own chips, which they are calling, as of right now, Apple Silicon. It's very much the same thing they're doing in iPhones right now with, you know, the iPhone 11 Pro has the A13 Bionic, not a turd teen Bionic. That would be pretty funny, though. Basically, what that means is... um. Performance per watt is going to skyrocket because if you think about it, the iPhone 11 Pro will blow a Galaxy S20 Ultra out of the water in performance, even though the S20 Ultra has like four times the power that the iPhone 11 Pro does on paper. But because of how Apple optimizes iOS for their processors, they can squeeze every just last drop of performance out of it that they can. And that's what's going to be happening with the Mac here. In the uh, in the preview of uh, Big Sur on the keynote, they demoed a, I believe it was a A12Z chip, right? Yeah, which the, there actually is, uh, I believe that's from the iPad Pro, the current chip. It's from, yeah, that, that processor is from the current iPad Pro. Now, to put that into perspective, they actually, well, allegedly, I guess there's no way to prove it, but they ran the official demo, like the first ever live demo of macOS Big Sur on a Mac Mini with an iPad Pro processor connected to a Apple Pro display. Yeah. Like, that's pretty sweet right there. I mean, and that's then that's an iPad processor, okay? That's not even a Mac processor yet. The fact that they're offering those Mac minis, they're offering the development kits to help the developers transition to it because we'll get into that in a minute, but um, they are transitioning away from Intel. Sam had actually encouraged me to try and get a dev kit since I do have a developer license, but when I looked into and it... And really uh, quick, hold on, hold on. That's how yeah. I have these betas. Big shouts to Matt. Go subscribe to his channel that has zero videos. Let's get him to a thousand subs, boys. Get this kid to a thousand <laughs> subs. Anyway, shouts to him. He's hooking me up with all of these betas. That's how I have them. These are day one developer betas that I just showed you here. I anyway, sorry, yeah. Matt. Go ahead. Uh, so essentially, I, I looked into getting a development kit because I looked and it was only five hundred bucks. But what you get is a Mac Mini with that i A twelve Z processor. Mac OS Big Sur and a bunch of development Xcode stuff, but the problem with it is you have to send it back at the end. Uh, more than likely because they're going to be making different processors, more powerful processors for the actual hardware they'll be releasing. And that's just kind of like a transition kit for getting away from Intel. Uh, but they did say uh, that there's a, what, what do they call that? Uh, this, what translates the apps on the go? Uh, uh, Universal 2 or something, I think it was. I can't remember the name of it. Um, Basically, but, what is that? Are you talking about the one that lets Intel apps run on Apple and then yeah. Apple apps run on Intel? Yeah. It's the same thing they did when they did the Intel from PowerPC transition. I think it was uh, Rosetta 2. Or it, it's Rosetta. That's what it is. Rosetta 2. Yeah. So Rosetta was introduced when they switched away from PowerPC to Intel uh, just it was like a bridge type thing, you know, kind of, it was just a bridge, you know, so PowerPC apps could... When you ran the app, yeah. Yeah, it would, it would run PowerPC apps on Macs with Intel processors. This is largely the same thing, which is why they it's, called it Rosetta 2, super original name right there. Uh, but basically, it means that Intel apps can run on these Apple-based Macs, which is pretty sweet. Um, they... Uh, back to the logos really quick. They changed the Final Cut logo, and I, I don't like it. it uh, I don't like it. But with that Mac Mini with the A12Z, 
they demoed editing three streams of 4K video. It was 24 frames a second, and they were editing it at the same time. Now, I want to talk about that for a second, because for those of you who have never used Final Cut before, you can change the preview window from better quality mode to better performance mode. And if that doesn't, if that still doesn't give you the performance you want, you can create proxy media, which is basically just like a very low resolution for you to preview. And then when you export the actual final product, it's the full resolution of the video, but it makes it easier for you to edit because, you know, say you don't have enough horsepower. So there's no way to prove that they didn't use proxy media or the better performance mode in Final Cut in order for that seamless editing of three streams of 4K to work on an iPad Pro processor, which my full-on iMac with an i7 and a fully dedicated GPU um, struggles with. It, it works. You just have to let it render out in the background before it will play it smoothly. Just, I'm skeptical about it running on an iPad processor like but that. But you can't deny the color correction that they were doing on the go. That doesn't matter if that's in a preview window or not. That's pretty intense. Color correction is intense work. And that but was not, almost instantaneous. It's, it's, not, it's not as intense as people think it is, though. People are like, oh, as soon right. as I put a color grade on, it's going to crash my entire computer. No, it's not. It, it can cause dropped frames. Yes, that's true. But it's... It's it really doesn't make that big of a difference when you start getting into performance degradation. That's when you start using like noise reduction filters and uh, other things like that. Color grading is not as graphics intensive as people think it is. However, yeah. it is still impressive that they're running full on Final Cut Pro 10 on an iPad Pro processor. I think that's pretty cool. There's macOS Big Sur. Guys, that was the hands-on. Uh, I guess we'll, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the website to dive a little bit deeper. macOS Big Sur Preview. Check that out, guys. Look at that. Apple always puts their little thing in there with their fancy dropping everything onto this MacBook Pro screen. Here's all the features I just showed you. Um, one thing I actually did forget to go over is maps, and we'll go over that in just a second here, but there's Control Center, uh, the new Safari, you can put backgrounds on it, and there's more privacy, that's about it. Um, doing it all in all new ways. Oh boy. Bold new experience, same Mac magic. Now, there's this design again, here's the... I, I didn't really demo this in depth, but look at these look at these buttons. They they no longer have borders and they look grayed out until you click on them and realize, oh, I can actually click on that. What? I I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. They've also used the same like share and favorite logo or uh, icons that they use on iOS, as well as the Wi-Fi icon is directly copied from iOS here as well. Um, the web page is not loading properly. So uh, give me just a second to try to fix that. Coming down farther on the page here, streamlined apps, refined dock, uh, what else does it say? Control center and notification center. Pretty cool. That's, you know, they're, they're basically just trying to make the Mac and uh, iOS more streamlined for a uh, very important reason. And that reason is you can now run iPad apps on the Mac, which is pretty sweet. We can finally have a Twitter app on the Mac now, which because there isn't one. I have no idea why, but you'll be able to run iOS, I believe iOS apps at least, but for sure iPad apps on the Mac, which is pretty sweet. At least in the newer Macs, uh, the ones with in the, the newer ones, yeah. Apple Silicon. Oh, you have to have an Apple Silicon for that. Yeah, because that's, okay. that's the same processor, uh, essentially. Okay, that makes sense same. then. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, the all new Safari. Uh, it's it's hate at first sight for your boy. I I don't like Safari. <laughs> I tolerate it. That's about. Eh. It. I don't yeah, know. Crumbs where it's at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, look at this. We made it more energy efficient, dude. I use an iMac. It's plugged into the wall. I don't care about energy efficiency. We're it's not all good. Power bill. It makes a negligible difference. I guarantee <laughs> I you, dude. At peak, I this know. iMac draws like 250 watts, and that's it. I negligible know. difference right there. Messages on Mac. It's been here for a while, but it actually supports 
Um, the iMessage effects, which I don't understand why it didn't do that when they came out on the iPhone. It's taken this long for them to put that in there. Recently, if I send Matt, or sorry, if, if Matt sends me a message with the fireworks effect, on Mac, it'll just say the message, and then under it, in very small lettering, in parentheses, it'll say, message sent with fireworks. Super anticlimactic, but now we finally have message effects on the Mac. No yeah. longer left to your imagination. Yep. Pin conversations, same as iOS. Inline reply, same as iOS. Mentions, same as iOS. Group photos, same as iOS. Images, same as iOS. <laughs> message effects, same as iOS. Everything here. Okay. Well, actually, the... Uh... Oh, wait, no, never mind. Never mind. I'm yeah, shut up, Matt. Else. Yeah. <laughs> Now, moving on to maps here. Maps, if you guys have noticed any just white cars driving around labeled maps.apple.com, this is what it was for. Now, originally, I just thought that it was to, you know, in the recent, in a recent iOS update, um, my maps app started telling me when there was a stop sign or a traffic light. So instead of saying, you know, in 200 feet, turn right, it would say at the light or at the stop sign, turn right. And I was like, that's pretty sweet. But then in the keynote, they dropped that we are getting a street view equivalent. Look, it's, it's called look around. It's literally street view, but that's what those cars labeled maps.apple.com. That's what they were for. So Apple Maps finally getting up there, getting up in the game with Google Maps with this uh, Street View feature. Or sorry, look around. Street View is probably a cool. copyright thing from Google. <laughs> yeah. Because I actually saw one of those cars come around my area several months ago. And it was pretty sweet to see it, but I was never really sure what they were doing it for. Because I'm like, I don't think they're doing yeah. Street View. Like, I've but, seen uh, those cars <laughs> like two and a half years ago. And nothing yeah. came of it. And now I'm just like, oh. I've seen nothing okay. in my area, but that would also explain why I don't think it's working in my area. Well, yet. that's that's so. because Matt never leaves his house, guys. I'm just Matt never leaves his house. That's why he hasn't seen those cars. Listen, you're not supposed to tell people that. Uh, too late, my guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's just about it for Mac OS Big Sur. Uh, there's a few more things down here. Check this out right here. Editing in photos. No thanks. Boy, I've got Adobe Lightroom for that. And here's those new crappy icons I was talking about. Um, yeah, editing in photos. Just use Adobe Lightroom. Listen now. New thing in the uh, music app. AirPods automatic switching. We already covered that. HomeKit secure video notifications. Same as iOS and tvOS. Uh, deeper knowledge for Siri. I don't know who uses Siri on a Mac. And faster updates. That's something I forgot to talk about. Let's talk about that really quick here. On the topic of updates, guys, check this out right here. When I open system preferences and hit software update, it does this little spinny thing, which has also been redesigned. It does that for a good amount of time right here still going and then it says unable to check for updates so uh, if that's a bug that's it this is what this mac is stuck on unless i completely reset it and sideload the uh, second beta but i'm guessing it's just because there's no updates yet because if you look under it it says no updates found please try again later and then over on the side here, this is something I've never seen before. Usually when I'm running a, uh, a beta, you know, a beta profile like I did for um, Catalina, I just never showed it in the rant cast, but it would say this Mac is enrolled in the developer seed program or something. But this time it says updates for this Mac are managed by swscan.apple.com. Now, that's Apple's update server. I just have never seen that before. Usually, it just says it's in, in, enrolled in the developer seed program. Something I wanted to talk about, too, which is universal on all the platforms um, that Apple has right now is the music. Uh, I, they didn't talk about this at all, but it's uh, they redesigned the music player. It's got the full screen effects and the lyrics still, but I noticed something when I was in CarPlay. It was like this little uh, infin infinity loop uh icon i never knew what it was they didn't talk about it in the keynote and uh turns out what it is uh they if you have a playlist or a single song playing and you turn that on it's uh it'll pick music similar 
to that song or that playlist and it'll endlessly play music assuming you pay for apple music uh but it, it kind of like spotify keeps the music going um or whatever that their settings called apple now has that which i think is pretty nice that's that's pretty awesome like do you don't have to have carplay for that do you it's no 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 i'm just saying i first noticed it in carplay but it's it's on okay. like my tv it's on my watch it's on my that's iPad pretty cool that that's is. pretty cool i'm gonna i'm excited to try that out now um but guys again Brandon didn't really talk too much, so uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to uh, give all your thoughts on macOS Big Sur. Give it a go. I think dude. Big Sur is nice. I think it looks... Even with its graphics, graph design looking a little weird, I will say at least it's a bit more consistent of win, than Windows 10, so That's props true. for Apple for that. Uh, the name Big Sur, that's still something I have to get kind of used to. But I guess they're giving themselves space so that next year when they can't figure out a name for their next Mac version of Mac OS, I guess they'll just name it Bigger Sir. Yeah, um, didn't we make that same just, joke about Sierra and yeah, High Sierra? Sierra and High Sierra, yeah. And we were, so they're just giving themselves some space. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. More time to think. I guess exactly. so, yeah. This will probably be... I might be getting a Mac this year, so... Big Sur might be the big, uh, be the Mac OS I finally get to experience in uh, all its glory. Because well, all the Macs that I it. own, yeah, that's true as well. If you get it like in a month, you'll have uh, Catalina. I'm probably going to be getting it in probably towards the end of the year is probably when it'll happen. Hold off till we'll the end see. of the year because I heard that's yeah, when they're going to be doing that's the when the first silicone. the uh the first apple, apple silicone. silicon mac is coming out at the end of the year allegedly yeah. it could be like home pod and get delayed yeah who knows <laughs> home pod isn't even i'm not gonna lie I still hey want don't one. talk crap on home pod i actually really I want, like no that I, thing. I want one i want okay. one but they're they're not doing much with it and they're not sad. And it is sad they should make a home pod mini but that's another yeah. conversation for another episode of this show Guys, to wrap this up, we're going to uh, briefly go over a few of the features in tvOS um, because there isn't really much that's changed. Uh, the biggest one is 4K YouTube on the Apple TV 4K. It's Finally. never been able, yeah, right. Yes. It's never been able to play 4K YouTube, and now with what is it, tvOS 14, we can now finally stream 4K YouTube on the Apple TV that literally has 4K in its name. Yeah, great. Yep. Um, those uh, little security pop-ups with the cameras that I talked about in the HomeKit overhaul, those are on the Apple TV. Pretty sweet. Um, still can't text or call from the Apple TV, which kind of sucks a little bit, but it's a TV. What are you going to do? Um, Matt, if no, there's anything least... I... Is there anything I missed? Yeah, there was... Go so ahead. they added multi-user support in the uh, display, you know, like you hold the display key and it brings over where you can, uh, kind of like the control center for the Apple TV, well now it can like customize what apps are available for that user, their user accounts, and if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure it's already there have, now. Well, it might be, I, I don't use my TV ever. Oh, because on, on mine, on mine, I can add users. Okay, then I... Like, yeah, that's that been there. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. But... I think they can also do. I think they do picture in picture, if I'm remembering correctly. No, it's not. They do, yeah. They do yet. picture in picture. Yeah, but it's uh, it'll be enabled in hopefully newer betas. Not entirely sure what the point of it is, though. Like you can't browse the web on an Apple TV. You can't look at Facebook but, on an Apple TV. But kind of like how TVs used to do that. If you wanted to be watching sports. And oh Netflix, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like say could, like. Yeah say like you're you're catching up on the simpsons you know but i don't really care about football but say you want to watch the game at the same time you can have a little square and just chill watch both of them at the same time you know that's why you have two eyes that's that's what that's for <laughs> yeah it's not for 3d depth or no not at all that. dude 3d no. 3d is fake there is no third dimension everything is 2d the apple watch is was the last thing that still supported 3d touch uh, and it no longer does as of watch os 14 so they've really completely killed that yeah ios it's 14 gone. still supports 3d touch no it's it it's does haptic touch you don't push in you hold you press okay and hold. but in the settings there's still a spot for 3d touch yeah on the phones to support it 
Yeah, on the phones that support it, it's still here. But yeah, three D, three D, and I haptic touch. I don't think it's still like you push in. It does look just, really. Yeah. There's a okay, whole. There's a light they, they press. They got rid of it in iOS 13. No, it's it's still on phones to support it. Here, here's a light press. Actually, sorry, that was a haptic touch. Here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Medium press, firm press. Okay, maybe maybe it's just fake now. I don't know. I. That's what I'm saying. It's fake. They they took it away. It's still here. It's still here. Yeah, it's but still there. But it seems there, to not do anything. That's what I'm saying. Which sucks. And watches didn't have 3D touch either. It was actually just force touch. That's what I meant, force touch. <laughs> I, I miss but, 3D yeah. touch. 3D touch was awesome, but the trade-off is a way bigger battery, so I think it's worth it. Guys, I guess that's going to be it for this episode of the Rantcast. Uh, not very in-depth, but like semi-in-depth of most of the new stuff. We didn't really talk about iPad OS because it's basically just iOS except bigger. But um, yeah, shouts to Matt and Brandon for being in this episode with me, giving me a chance to test out this new OBS scene with multiple people here. Go subscribe to both of their channels. There will be end cards and links in the description below. But until the next video, guys, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't seen the Rantcast in real life, go check that out right now. Um, crap. If you tap up in the uh, hold on, hold search. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I knocked my pop filter out of the way. You good? So if you okay. tap up in the search, hold on, hold on, I am, I am. Okay, now you can go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> It'll download a temporary version of that app that gives you the full functionality. What just happened? Are you serious? My connect, my connect died. Hang on. <laughs> Give me one sec. Oh, no. One second. Technical difficulties. Okay. Welcome Wait. to the Rantcast, boys. Now, face recognition is cool. So, in the uh, in the presentation, they demoed this by, you know, someone was at the door, and then they cut to a home kit saying, I can't remember her name. We're just going to say Matt. The home kit went, Matt is at the door. And then the guy just unlocked it with his phone, and he came in, and it was really cool. Uh, Actually, go I'm going to stop for a second. Home what? pod, and you want to say that it also comes up on the Apple TV. Uh, I don't want oh, you that's to get right. flagged for saying home kit <laughs> oh i said home kit not home pod yeah oh shoot my bad okay <laughs> thanks thanks for catching that all right let me just start that over really quick